Hi, Dr. Kevin Skinner with you. Thank you for taking time to ask your question. Today, the question is about uh, an individual whose partner has had multiple affairs and they're asking, uh, is it possible that it's more than just infidelity and affair? Is it possible that they might have some kind of sexual addiction or sexual compulsivity? Well, when we look at the concept of addiction or hypersexuality or compulsive sexual behavior, there are specific signs that we look for. So in contrast with the person having an affair, uh, maybe a one-time affair, this person has mo had multiple affairs. So what would we assume there? That this person is uh, seeking attention serially. In other words, he's looking for attention from many different people. Um, I would want to know how frequent those affairs were occurring. Were they back to back to back? Was there time between them? Um, what is your partner's energy or your spouse's energy? Are they, are they constantly flirting? Are they engaging with other people? Because it seems like there's an underneath issue here of a need for attention, a need for someone to validate them. That's what my initial instinct is here. But I still have other questions. Questions like, um, is, it, is it one affair after the other? Is, this, is it multiple people over, over a short period of time? Because the concept of an affair is that you're developing a relationship, some kind of emotional interaction with this person uh, in contrast with it just being some type of a one-night stand. So when we look at this, multiple affairs, we're looking at multiple people over a period of time. Now, in contrast, if a person has sexual compulsivity, uh, what you may refer to as a sexual addiction, uh, they begin to take risks, uh, risks that they aren't even aware of at times, that it could cost them their job or their family. That's concept number one. That it becomes um, more intensity. So they find that they need more and more of the high to, to get the, the high that they were getting. So more intensity, more risk-taking. And, and then they go through withdrawals if they aren't able to get whatever that behavior, that sexual activity is. So then I'm looking for other ways that they may be acting out. So it may not just be an affair. Maybe they're viewing pornography. Maybe they're going to um, uh, hiring sex workers. Maybe they're doing other things. And if we start putting all of those things together, what that would suggest is that they're always on, meaning that they're constantly on uh, sexually and it, their life revolves around their sexuality. Now, some people say, why, if that's the case, what's actually going on inside of them? And it's been my experience is that they, that's like their alcohol or their drug, and they don't know how to, so to speak, self-soothe in other ways. And so they pursue those activities, hoping that, that it will somehow soothe them. And that really what happens there is their life becomes chaotic, and they literally go into a chaos world. Lies, deception, hidden behavior, spent money. And when you have that kind of chaos, if their sexuality was alcohol, they would probably be inebriated nearly every day. Now, some people say there's no such thing as sex addiction, but when I have observed individuals who are compulsively acting out that way, I don't know what else you're going to call it other than they are taking high risks. They're uh, doing those addictive behaviors that we just outlined. And as a consequence, we have to call it something. Now that is different than just a, a person who's having an affair. And we need to separate them out because you need to be able to treat what this person is actually going through, what they're experiencing. In contrast with a, a, an affair, multiple affairs, other sexual behaviors would suggest that, that their sexuality is, is consuming their life and it's made it pretty chaotic. And that's what we would be looking for if it truly is a sexual addiction. So I, again, I don't know your specific partner, um, their experience. Um, what I look for as a therapist is I look at the sexual history of an individual beginning from the very beginning and we work through the steps over time of, okay, what happened at first sexual experience? And then we look at their sexual history timeline and then together we seek an understanding of what, what they're actually are experiencing. And that's a much more helpful approach rather than to say, hey, this person's an addict, this person isn't. I'm just more looking more of their history, how it's influenced their life, how much it's on their mind, because it's not just the behaviors we're looking at. We're looking at the thoughts, the emotions, uh, the fantasy, or what we call preoccupation. Now, finally, if you are trying to understand this, my experience has been uh, that if you do a thorough assessment, you can have greater clarity of what you're actually dealing with. And that is something that I strongly recommend as a therapist because many individuals that I've worked with, they, um, they seek help, but sometimes they're not accurately diagnosed. 
Uh, so if you are looking to separate between affairs and maybe sexual compulsivity, sexual addiction, unwanted sexual behaviors, I would strongly suggest that you find a certified sex addiction therapist, uh, what we call a CSAT, who can administer uh, an assessment to really identify the depth of, of the issue that's going on. And that would be my suggestion in a case like this where there's been multiple affairs to get, to get a more thorough evaluation so proper treatment can occur. All right, thank you for asking your question and I appreciate you taking the time to do so.